Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co, and today we're going to review an illustrative artist on YouTube called Kellogg's Loops. I don't know if that's his real name or some kind of <laughs> strange name he's given himself, but uh, I think it's probably his real name. It's just a little bit, a little bit strange. Um, so let's uh, go check it out. All right, this first video of Kellogg is a watercolor tutorial how to paint waves so let's get started how are we all doing today first off happy new year to welcome the new year i thought i'd start off with a video on how to paint watercolor waves and so that's what we're doing today <laughs> So, got... so it's kind of nice he's setting the mood the volume is very loud i'm probably going to turn this down <laughs> let me just turn that down now wow it's on low and it's still blasting anyway uh this is called misty ocean um and he has kind of some rock set up the water so it has a really nice aesthetical appeal of how you're going to set up the painting space Hello, it's a great walkthrough. I am Calliope and today I'm gonna show you how to create step-by-step -step a watercolor misty ocean sea painting. I will be using Artie's cold press paper that I cut in an A5 size and my custom watercolor palette which I have a full video on how I made it so I will leave it up here in case you're interested. This palette includes... So this is really cool, she's taking all the colors and she put it on watercolor so you can see the strongest point to a lighter point so she automatically knows right out of the gate how all her colors function that's a really strong way to paint and make it kind of a shortcut to painting quickly the Mijello watercolors van gogh and artesia and as soon as i opened it i realized that i had dropped this a few days back and if any of you have watched my palette video then we all saw this coming all the artesia watercolors that were already too dry and cracky fell out and broke immediately so Everything was just a mess, little pieces everywhere, so I... So I'm going to skip that part. Um, she breaks all this stuff. It's kind of a nice story uh, to build up interest. And let's move on forward to where she starts painting. ...in and feather on the paper without creating any harsh lines or spots, which is the best way to create the misty effect. Also, as you see, I'm keeping the color very light and transparent since this will be the sky and we do not want it to be too dark. So this is a classic way of painting on um, painting tutorials is you do just a top-down look. You get exactly how the paint looks. You don't see the painter per se at all and it looks like she isn't really open to showing her face so I don't know what's going on there. But you do have that nice straight on shot. You can see the colors there. She has her mixing bowl so you see how the painting is being brought about. And so that's pretty nice and you have a shell or two to kind of add a little more environment. Let's skip ahead a little bit. It is a wave now. Also keep in mind that the closer the waves are to us, the bigger they are. So as we move backwards, going closer to the horizon, the waves will be smaller and smaller. And actually we will start using less black or dark colors because this will help with the depth and the dimension of the painting. <clears throat> so she has this really nice technique on the waves with a really fine detail at the same time washes so you kind of going back and forth between washes and fine detail which you really need to do in watercolor so let's uh, keep going here let's skip ahead a little bit because as i said the more we go closer to the horizon the smaller our waves will be All right, so that's that part with a little bit of time lapse to kind of make it go faster. Let's scroll in a little bit further down here. I think that will also give it a little bit something extra unique and special. And for me, gold details always do the part. So I used my deep pen and my Winsor & Newton gold ink. And 
and once again <laughs> created small lines as the highlights of the waves and I truly believe that this was the best choice I made because when you look at the painting on the top you cannot see the sparkles so I kept the moody misty vibes but when you move it around then you can see the sparkle and I just love it I am so so happy. so this is a really cool thing you kind of start with a realistic effect and then you add gold to kind of make it a shimmering really nice touch and so this is really kind of what you want to do as an artist is kind of step away from a pure realism to kind of interpretive colors like obviously there's no gold there but to add the gold really gives it that pop and it's also not traditional watercolor in a sense because she's using ink um, so there's a lot of purists out there that say you have to be only watercolor you can't use anything else which i find ridiculous but <laughs> this is like 99 percent watercolor if you add some ink ah i'm good with it I'm happy how this painting turned out and i'm also happy to let you know that this original painting will be up on my etsy shop for any of you out there who would like to give this little painting a home yeah it just makes me so so happy to know that you guys can have an actual piece of art made by me so thank you all of you for buying through my etsy shop and so, so i really like her voice she has a really even tone voice that goes along very quietly and very crisply the way she talks so it has a really nice kind of um, auditorial sensation when you listen to her so let's move on to the next video this one is her art studio so we'll see if we see her this time ads good morning good morning and welcome back to the Kellogg's YouTube channel so for today's video I'll be taking you okay so what I noticed right off the bat the first girl is not the same person I think I'm not sure <laughs> Now I'm totally confused, like, why is this girl on his channel? Did he have a sex change? What's going on? I don't know. This is really bizarre. Um, but we'll see. What's I don't know how it works. I don't know if it's the same person, a different person. I, I think it's a different person just based on the voice. So he probably brought in a guest artist, I guess. Um, it's kind of an interesting idea. I never thought of that doing on my channel. I would have an interview, per se. But to have someone actually do a painting tutorial on your painting tutorial site, I don't know, it's just kind of an interesting way to handle it. You guys, on a little tour of my studio and workspace. I've actually been planning on doing up this workspace area for some time now. I spent basically 99% of my time here in this room. It's not only my workspace area, it's actually my room as well. <laughs> for this studio tour, I'm going to be needing the help of this little guy. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Boom! All right, we're on the other side now, so let's continue with our studio tour. So this is an overview of my room from one of the corners and basically what it looks like. Starting off, that's my bed and all of my friends make fun of my bed because I sleep on the floor. I don't know, I like sleeping on the floor because you can kind of just chill out whenever I'm tired of painting and need a break and I just fall onto the bed and just relax for a bit. This is my temple pretty much. One of my pet peeves is when people put their dirty feet on my bed like and my biggest peeve is when people bring shoes into the bed. That kills me. Oh, God. And so it's really kind of funny. He's bringing in, like, shoes and kind of make it really fun and poppy kind of feel to the video. So I think style-wise, that's a pretty fun uh, take on it. I don't... Um, I would expect to actually just show the actual painting space, but it is his bedroom, so it is what it is. Let's go ahead a little bit. Book, just her first Kickstarter campaign. Beside that, I've got my little camera battery charging station. And just above that, we've got my camera set up. I've got my Canon 700D. It's, it was a birthday present from my 21st, which is awesome because I was just starting to do my YouTube stuff more seriously then. It's just mounted on a tripod that I got for my brother, um, borrowed for my brother. <laughs> Attached to this DSLR is a Rode VideoMic Pro. I bought this as a birthday present for myself. I bought it because the audio in my room isn't really good. As you can see, I've got pretty echoey walls and the sound isn't that nice. Yeah, that is a big challenge. Um... For recording video, if you got a wall space like that, you really need this foam board you can see here. And that really softens the sound a lot. I don't know what you do in this room. You probably could have hooks up. And when he's filming one area, you could have curtains along the side. That sound would be way better in this room. You'd have to have kind of probably some kind of loose, really heavy fabric curtains that's kind of loose, not touching the wall, kind of have that space so that sound hit it and just kind of absorbs it. I think that would be the best solution for this area and have a 
a curtain that's kind of like wavy if you can't have the permanent foam board although i just put this up with nails so it's like you take it off you take out a nail there's hardly any marks on the the wall just using really thin brad nails um, but that's my solution um, you can see if you take this off there's literally there's only one nail holding this up so i just put it on there and boom pop it in there And you're gonna have that nice soft sound in your area so that's what i would suggest for this guy nice so this guy has been a really worthwhile investment you guys are probably used to this view here but this is what i'm used to when so let's go ahead that i'm working on it's a strathmore sketchbook i've also got a moleskin moleskine whatever it is sketches just random bits and pieces and i've got my watercolor palette set my winds of newton one so yeah definitely have that um those moleskin books are great if you're learning you can move much faster if you just constantly every day do a little bit of work, a little bit of work, a little bit of work in there. And those are just kind of your casual sketches, maybe eyes, you work on hands, you work on faces, and you just kind of slowly develop all the different things you need to put together to do a great portrait, illustrative style work, which is mostly obviously the human figure. Always on my desk, ready to go in case I want to paint. Same with my cups for water, my tissues, and my little water spray bottle. Basically, the setup is just that I have everything I need in one space. Cool, let's go ahead. Hey, that's beautiful. But then... <laughs> this is the table that I decided to DIY. So it's kind of funny, just kind of has this cheeky humor to go along with the whole video, which makes it really fun. A lot of visual elements, the, the table, the chairs, etc. I think we get the point, I'm going to skip this. Um, I was expecting more of an art studio studio, but obviously he's just... Just starting out, so you're just gonna have your bedroom and that's it, so that's fine, you know, it is what it is. So let's go to, this one is called Ping a Sailor Moon in his style. Good morning, good morning. How are we all doing today? So, whenever I get asked, how did you start drawing? I have one answer, Sailor Moon, which is who we'll be drawing and painting for today's oh, video. Ads, Jeez. I'll be recreating this. It's a scene from the anime series where she's in the middle of battle and things aren't looking too good on her side. I start off the drawing by loosely sketching out a composition and eventually I'll tidy up the line work ready for painting. So this is probably tighter than I would expect with a watercolor painting but you need a really strong line to kind of get that borders. Let's see if he puts fixative on this or what. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Part of our morning ritual included watching cartoons on an Australian kids network called Cheese TV. We'd watch for about half an hour and then head off for school. We had shows like Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, Beyblade. But one that stuck with me the most was Sailor Moon. So really great colors for the face. I mean, it's really hard to control the color really well in watercolor. My older brother was dating a girl named Kim. And honestly, my memories around that age are virtually non-existent. But one thing that I remember vividly was her showing me how to draw Sailor Moon using a how to draw anime characters in five steps approach. It was this thing where you draw a cross, a circle and a triangle, and that all came together to make a head. And I remember at the time being so mind blown. Really high quality. Let's go ahead here a little bit. Time you'd ever see me sit still or quiet. And to this day, I think that still holds pretty true. So this is a super cool technique. He's actually taped in every single part of the figure of the face. And then he, that allows him to put this really cool background. So you have this really harsh contrast from the portrait to the background. And you wouldn't normally have this in watercolor. You would have a very blurry edge just it's very hard not to have a controlled edge so but he's actually physically cut the tape out taped it hopefully he can pull it all off um i'm curious what tape he's using to actually be able to pull this off oh and by the way kim would go on later to marry my brother and become my now sister-in-law and spoiler alert i would go on to continue drawing and painting eventually making a career out of it and making this video. So Kim, from your little bro, this one's for you. Hadn't it been for you showing me how to draw, I would have never have stumbled into this wonderful world of art and anime. It's a really precise brushwork. 
once the background washes and details were all done, it was time so for one of my cut in a little bit. parts of the painting process. The peel pawn. So he's peeling it off. It looks like he's using masking tape, which I'm surprised he's not tearing the shit out of that paper, but... Go figure, he knows what he's doing. And he's actually sealed it too, there's um... See, I told you it would be worth it. With our peel pawn tingles satisfied, it was time to paint in and make Sailor Moon look like, well, Sailor Moon. There's amazing techniques here. Especially for watercolor, it's just very hard to control medium, and he's just really got this down here. Great brushes, obviously, too. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So this is nice. He has a zoom. You do see a little bit around the edges of the face um, that you have that traditional problem with watercolor where it kind of it bleeds a little bit so to say so he does have a little bit of that but really clean line more or less per se which is super unusual in watercolor um, great techniques here you guys definitely should copy this Amazing brush control. Very tight line here. Now right, let's go ahead a little bit. Just put in some gold leaf, which is a pain in the ass to work with. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend gold leaf. It's really hard to get to work right. I think it's pretty good. Wow, just it's just amazing though. Line is so clean on this with the watercolor because that watercolor usually gets a lot of paint will get under tape. I've had that problem so many times in painting. So for him to have a clean line like that and not tear the paper, pulling off the masking tape, you're like, dude, how are you doing this? <laughs> Let's so skip ahead a little bit. Or things that you remember drawing. What got you started into art? And that brings us to the end of today's episode. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Don't forget to make more art, and I'll see you guys soon. So, you know, super amazing artist here. Um, just amazing artwork quality. I don't know why there's a girl in the first video. Maybe he changed his sex, or maybe he brought a guest artist in. I'm not sure. Um, it sounds like a different voice, so I think it's a different um, artist, per se. Maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> it's just really strange. There's this, like, nine-month gap as well, so... First, I thought, because it was a girl in the first video, I'm like, oh, she got pregnant, had a kid, so she took 10 minutes off. And I'm like, well, why is there a break with a guy? What was he doing for the 10 months? So there's kind of this weird, mysterious element. Really great artist, illustrated some amazing work, very high quality, just blending all his techniques in watercolor, just super over the top, really hard to do, because it's just not a, it's not a forgiving medium. You can get really muddy colors and not Chris line, and he's able to do kind of the wash look and then also the tight detail with the drawing. He's using all these protective layers to kind of get different layers with the effects, which is super cool. The gold leaf is kind of a really fun thing to do on top. I've worked with it. It's really challenging to work with. I 
you know, I used it once or twice, and I was like, ah, I don't want to use this ever again. Because <laughs> it's really flaky, it's very delicate, you waste a lot of it, you just feel like constantly frustrated using this material. The works I have worked on, I was able to do successfully, but it was very brittle, that layer, and you're just layering kind of glue between the layer, but it's a very fine, thin layer. I mean, he's using it correctly, I think, in that there's thin lines, and so you put a protective layer, it's fun. He's probably gonna do a protective sealant on that. There's no way you wouldn't be able to do that with a gold leaf and also watercolor, it's very easily damaged, so he probably has a fixative on top of that to finalize, but man, just amazing watercolor, illustrative work. Really high level game, I'd say. I'd highly recommend check him out. He doesn't have that many videos. He might have maybe 30, 50 videos, I think. So he just started, but obviously he's really high on top of his game. So he's just gonna hit it out of the park as far as video quality and also, you know, just that putting it together into a nice storyline is really good. And obviously great artist. So I think he has a really solid element. He just needs to put kind of like a soundproofing like this foam rubber or something or a heavy curtain in the background where he's not filming to kind of cut down on the echo it'll make a big difference versus trying to fix it with the mic with the cover for the mic the cover for the mic that he's using on the road mic is really i have one but it's called kind of a dead dead cat because it looks like a dead cat normally with fur but that only blocks wind from you when you're outside onto the camera but if you're in a surround a tight area especially like this for example there's gonna be a lot of echo and so I've put up these foam all over the place and that really softens the sound a lot more. Ideally you would have it 100% and you'd have this super rich bass sound in your camera. It would only go straight to the camera and you won't have the echo effect. And he's getting a lot of echo effect in that studio. And that camera blocking is not doing much for that. It helps a little bit, but not that much. So yeah, I just put up curtains and now it'll be like, you know, he's probably like 99.9% .9 there. Just that 0.10% will make the videos better on the sound. And yeah, hopefully you guys like my reaction to Kellogg Loops. I think that's his name. Thanks for watching, guys.